All right, let's go to question number 35. And question number 35 has been picked up from rotational motion. A bob of mass m attached to an inextensible string of length l is suspended from a vertical support. The bob rotates in a horizontal circle with an angular speed omega about vertical. And the question is about point of suspension we have to see all these things. The point is the whole thing explains a conical pendulum and here is the conical pendulum. And this conical pendulum is rotating with a angular velocity omega about this vertical axis. And the whole thing has to be discussed about point of suspension. Now we got to see everything about point of suspension and basically it asks about conservation of angular momentum either in terms of magnitude, direction or both. Like L is for angular momentum, changes both in magnitude and direction. Angular momentum is conserved. Angular momentum changes only in magnitude but not in direction. And the reverse case changes only in direction but not in magnitude. And the whole angular momentum has to be discussed about the point of suspension. So we know the torque changes angular momentum. And let's make the free body diagram here. This is mg and this is tension. These are the total free body diagram. Let's try to see the torque about this point. The torque due to T is 0. And torque due to mg, we know by R cross mg, about this point, the torque will have a direction tau that is cross in this way by using R cross F. And then let's see angular momentum about the same very point. If I assume to rotate in this direction, this is the direction of velocity. I have assumed the rotation in this way and angular momentum about this point you can use the rule of R cross V and that gives the direction of angular momentum. Now this is more than enough to conclude. The torque vector is inside the plane and angular momentum is in the plane and you could see torque being perpendicular to L it can change only the direction of angular momentum but the magnitude will not be changing. So that finally leads to option number D. L changes only in direction but not in magnitude. Let's proceed with next question. That's question number 36. All right, let's go to question number 36. And it is from error and measurement. The current voltage relation of diode is this much. I is exponent 1000 V by T minus 1 milliampere. Current is in milliampere where voltage is measured in volts and temperature in Kelvin. If error in voltage is plus minus 0 0.01 volt while measuring current of 5 milliampere at 300 Kelvin. The error in value of current in milliampere is and from the whole nature of the question it is clear that the error in temperature is nil or you can say it's very very small so the question did not find any necessity to give error in temperature. Let's try to go with the solution it's not a regular question that you get but a slight bit of calculus you got to apply. I is E raised to the power 1000 V by T minus of 1. Now let's go with DI, the change in current or in our case it's an error. Let me keep current in milliampere, V in volt and T in temperature itself. So this is going to be DI equals to 1000 by T because T is a constant E raised to the power 1000 V by T and the derivative is with respect to voltage, so dV. Now all I need to put is the value of dI that will be equals to 1000 by T, so 1000 by 300 and I got to put 
this value e raised to the power 1000 v by t that can be done from here if I take this here i plus 1 would be this much and i is already 5 milliampere so plus 1 that means current would be 6 milliampere so that's a value and dv which is given that's plus or minus 0 0.01 so the whole thing has been kept in their respective unit and quite obviously a simple calculation reveals 0 0.2 milliampere which goes as option number b now let's proceed to question number 37 Okay students, let's go to question number 37. It is from a tower of height h, a particle is thrown vertically upwards with a speed u. So it's something like this. The question has been put up from kinematics very clear to you. There is the tower of height h and a particle has been projected up with speed u. The time taken by particle to hit the ground, means it goes up and comes down, is n times that taken by it to reach the highest point of its path. So first of all, let me try to calculate the total time of flight starting from here to here. I can use s equals to ut plus half at square, goes up and comes down, the total displacement is minus h initial velocity is plus u so let me call that time as t acceleration minus g and this makes a quadratic in t and on solving that you get t as plus u plus u square plus 2gh by g many of you must have this expression by heart or not it's an easy quadratic this is the time that it takes to go from up and down and the question says this time is n times the time that it takes to reach its highest point the time of ascent is quite obviously u by g but this time is n times the time of ascent so this is the relation that we have achieved square it and manipulate it Ultimately, you'll reach to option number D. So that was the question, question number 37. We'll go to question number 38 now. Okay, question number 38 is from ray optics and something related to lens maker formula. A thin convex lens made from crown glass whose refractive index has been given, has focal length f. Nothing is said, so we'll assume that this is when it's in air. So in that situation, with the first data you find, 1 by f is mu, 3 by 2 of lens by medium, minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2, the geometrical factor, let me make it k. So 1 by f comes out to be, well, this would be 1 by 2, so k by 2. That's equation number 1 based on the first data. Now, when it is measured in two different liquids having refractive indices 4 by 3 and 5 by 3, it has the focal lengths f1 and f2 respectively. Then, based on this, we got to choose the option. f1 and f2 both become negative, so and so, so and so, so and so. All right, first situation now, we'll go with 1 by f1. And 1 by f1, f1 is the focal length when it is measured in liquid of refractive index 4 by 3. So mu of lens by mu of medium minus 1 into the geometry, that's k. And likewise, 1 by f2 will be mu of lens 3 by 2 and mu of medium is 5 by 3 minus 1 into k. So you could see f is there, f1 is there, f2 is there. Based on this, it's a very easy choice. f1 would come greater than f and f2 is obvious to be negative. So question number 38 will go with 
Option number C. Now, let's see question number 39. 